Hey everybody, this is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's Dad and Marketing Gunslinger. Welcome to another episode of Uncopyable Business. I'm glad you're here this week. Big shout out to the gang at Driver's Cutting Tool, Costican and, and Sarah. Really appreciate you guys sending me some swag. I got, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got... Uh, I got a T-shirt. I got this this cool hat. This this hat is going on the golf course this week. Uh, and then I got uh, a nice coffee mug uh, right there. Uh, and I will be using that stuff. So appreciate you guys sending me that. And I, when my clients send me stuff, I'm very very happy. So uh, anyway, so I want to talk about something that was just announced in the last few days down at the D23 convention. For those of you that don't know about that, it's the uh, uh, annual annual get together of the those adults who wish that they were still in the Mickey Mouse Club. You know, I've talked about D23 before. If you're not familiar with it, go to d23.com and check it out. But they had a big convention last week, got a lot of press, a lot of publicity, but there was something that kind of snuck in, kind of snuck in that uh, was pretty pretty darn cool. And that was that they announced a brand new that's opening in 2019, a Star Wars hotel now this is very exciting news especially for those of us who are star wars fans now i'm not one of those crazy uh, and i and i say this with affection crazy nuts about star wars but i am definitely a star wars fan so this this kind of appeals to me and i'll be anxious to see what happens when it opens up because this is going beyond the typical uh themed hotel so to speak, uh, that you, you know, and I mean, Disney has them. They they're not the only ones. There are themed hotels all around all around the world. Uh, but uh, uh, in this case, what they have announced is that when you check into the Star Wars hotel, you check in to become a character in the storyline of Star Wars. That they will give you a name. I think they will give you a uh, uh, some kind of a uniform, something to wear. They will give you. Uh, a backstory, a history, or something like that, so that it's it's almost like the Star Wars Hotel will be uh, its own theme park uh, within the Disney World, uh, and and it's going to be in Disney World. So, uh, so it's gonna, it's very exciting uh, for those of us that are Star Wars fans. Uh, for those of you that aren't, I'm sure you're saying, eh, who cares, right? Eh, don't care. And uh, and so and, and that's the thing here. Okay, that's uh, is that this is a business learning opportunity for us to study okay just even the announcement of this is is a great opportunity to learn and maybe steal a little bit of genius from them because let's think about this for a second all right see the on the inside of the Star Wars hotel it's just a hotel right you're going to go in there and there're going to be beds there's going to be uh you know the bathroom the other the other amenities things like things like that in there but you know what yeah right no it's not really going to be a ho just a hotel uh, because you know according to this artist's rendering uh, right here it's actually you know it's actually gonna look like a cabin on a space cruiser that, that might be going through outer space and you're on your way to, to to go to another planet and when you open up the window uh, you are actually looking at outer space so <laughs> I think that'll be very very cool uh, I have to I have to believe that that outer space the the view outside the window is also going to be anim animated motion you know uh, going on with it uh, so it'll be very very cool uh, and for those of us that are fans we're gonna we're gonna really really enjoy this but saying that it's just a hotel uh, is sort of like saying that Space Mountain is just a roller coaster because really in fact Space Mountain is simply a roller coaster that has been wrapped. In a very unique experience that makes people want to ride it over and over and over again because of, because of the unique ex experience. And so I, I I'm thinking that this is kind of going to be the same thing with the Star Wars Hotel. And I think there are three things that we can take away from just this announcement and looking at how they're positioning this and what it's going to what it's going to be and what it's going to happen and stuff like that. And 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 all of us can learn from this. Not not only those of us that are in the B two B world, but those of us that are in the B two C world. All three of these uh, uh, lessons can uh, we we can use each one of these. And the first one is that they are not selling a product. See, I've already stressed that. See, uh, the product is a hotel, and they are not selling a hotel. They are selling the experience that wraps around the hotel. The hotel happens to be just kind of uh, you know what's going. You know, you, you kind of have to be there. Uh, you're staying there, so you need a place to 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 sleep and keep your stuff and. You know, take a shower and, and stuff like that. No, they're wrapping it in an experience, 
that goes far beyond just being in a hotel. And of course, I've stressed that it, that this is for Star Wars fans. Me, you know, I'm sure, as I said, there are a lot of you out there. They're probably going. I would have no interest in going to this hotel. And that's fine. And I don't think Disney is too concerned about it because they're really going after the Star War, the big Star Wars fans. And, you know, this type of, uh, experience is being sold all in all different industries all over the place. And just, just a handful of, uh, of examples is that, like, this is Pebble Beach, uh, you know, down in, uh, uh, Monterey. California or Carmel, California, and uh, Pebble Beach. If you are a golfer, if you are a real, uh, uh, real golfer, and you love the game of golf, well, Pebble Beach is probably one of the uh, very small handful of locations that you want to go play because it's where the gods have walked, and it's you know amazing golf tournaments have been held there. Champions, you know, the most famous golfers in the world have played there. And it's this gorgeous, gorgeous location. So like this, this for example, this is the eighth hole at uh, uh, Pebble Beach. This happens to be my favorite par four in the world. And I just, I'm just blown away every time I look at it uh, because you're actually hitting your second shot over that canyon, that canyon, you know, that, that uh, uh, cliff uh, over to the green. And it's just spectacular. And, and so, those of us that are super, super serious about golf, you're going to want to go there and you'll be willing, willing to pay the money to go there. You'll, uh, those of us that are super serious about rock and roll and music and things like that, you can, uh, you can go and you can participate in, uh, rock, rock star camps. Uh, this one, for example, the guy who's singing is the camper at this rock star camp and the, the guys who are backing him up with guitars. Are from our actual rock stars. They're from the uh, the the power group Judas Priest, and uh, you know a lot of big hits. But you can pay for the experience of going and singing with rock stars, to so that you ostensibly are a rock star yourself. Let's say you're a skater. You want to uh, either get way better at skating, or you want to have an experience in skating that you can you you can't have anywhere else. And uh, here in this case. You've got Dorothy Hamill, who has her own skating star experience, I guess, uh, where uh, you can go and spend a couple days with Dorothy Hamill and get tips from an Olympic champion. I mean, that's that's a huge experience. So number one, like I said, number one is that they're not selling a product. They're not just selling a hotel. Number two is they're not selling to everyone. You know, I've, I've already said it multiple times. You know, they're just selling to the Star Wars fans is what they're doing and they're really narrowing it down you know that we uh, you know I teach that we should be selling to our moose uh, and we need to know who our moose are and forget all the other animals well in reality once we've identified our moose we can actually narrow down we can go into the moose category so to speak into the moose segment and we can find those hyper uh, prospects those hyper customers uh, who will uh, pay a lot more money. So like, for example, like I've said, uh, uh, in Star Wars, you, you know, you might enjoy the Star Wars movies, but you uh, have no interest in uh, going to a hotel to, to spend uh, and spend a lot of money to participate in the hotel. Uh, and that's fine. Right. But there is a there is if you think in terms of the 80 20 rule. So like like let's say, for example, uh, you are able to identify the moose as your target market. And so you have moose as customers. We all know the 80-20 rule. And if it, if it works for your company, like it does for pretty much everybody else, uh, then 20% of your moose represent 80% of your income. Well, the 80-20 rule goes, you know, can go all the way in, in, into the segment itself. So like, let's say, let's take the 20% of people who are giving you 80% of your money. Well, even within that 20%, the 80-20 rule applies as well. So that 20% of that group represents 80% of that income. Or if you want to look at, if you really want to figure it out, 4% of your market, uh, uh, of your customers probably represent 96% of your revenues. Uh, and that's, you know, that the 4% are the hypers. They're the hyper customers. Those are the ones who are willing to, to spend a lot more money with you. And this is true in most cases is that uh, you can find uh, um, customers out there who uh, will, will spend a lot more money with you without really a lot of hassle doing that. 
So you see, it's it's not only just a club like like I was talking about D23 down in Anaheim. D23 is a club, and you can go to D23. You can join D23 right now. It's seventy five bucks a year to join D23, and then you can go attend the D23 convention with all the other enthusiastic Mickey Mouse Club. Uh, um, you know, I don't want to say rejects, but let's just say that you've grown too old to be part of the Mickey Mouse Club. And uh, so, you know, but what do you get? You're part of the club. You get cool stuff, right? You know, when you go to the when you go to the D23, you get to see all kinds of neat new things that are going to be presented. You're going to be coming out the new movies. They had the whole cast from the Avengers. All the Avengers were there on stage at D23. Uh, you know, tremendous experience. But then when you take that take that group of people who are at D23, well, only a certain percentage of them are going to be interested in going to the hotel. And that's the hyper group. That's the hyper group. So uh, they're not selling to everyone. They're selling to the very, very specifically targeted uh, uh, customer. And and most important of all, they are not competing on price. So if they were if they were selling hotel rooms, if they positioned it as a hotel, then they would be competing with all the other hotels in the area, including their own. You know, they, they, the Star Wars hotel would be competing with the Grand Floridian. It'd be uh, competing with. You know the A-frame with the uh, the Contemporary Hotel with uh, um, you know the Swan and the Dolphin and all these other ones that, that they've got, but that's not what they're going to do. They are not competing on price. Now some of the you know, and I I think that the rumors that are starting on the pricing for this stuff are completely uh, um, guessed. I don't think there has been any announcement by Disney about any type of pricing or anything like that. But some of the rumors are out there that it's going to be like a thousand bucks a night to stay in uh, at at the hotel. Well. And, and there are a lot, there's been a lot of pushback on that price saying, I would never spend a thousand dollars, you know, to stay at a hotel. Well, that's right. Who would want to spend a thousand dollars to stay at a hotel? Now, maybe some of you do, but not this guy. And, uh, so, you know, you're not spending a thousand dollars on, on a hotel. You're spending a thousand dollars on the experience that you're going to have by staying there. So you're not competing on price. So you think about it like in golf, you know, Pebble Beach does not compete on price. With other, with other golf courses. It costs $525 to play Pebble Beach. If you want to get a cart, you want to get a caddy, it's extra, right? So $525 to play a four or five hour round of golf. Most golfers will never spend that. But I guarantee you, if you try to get a tee time at Pebble Beach, it's going to be a few months before you can get on the golf course. So there are enough of that 4% out there to to cover that. Also, the rock star camp. Think about this. This guy who's singing right there paid four thousand bucks to be at that rock star camp so he could be on stage there with with Judas Priest. Now, on top of that, if he wants a professional recording of his performance on stage with Judas Priest, it's going to cost him another twenty five hundred dollars. See, money is not an issue for him. The experience, the memory that he takes away is what he's really, really paying for. So the question is, what are you selling out there? Are you just selling hotel rooms? See what I'm saying? Is it, Are you selling a hotel room? And so now you have to compete with all the other hotels. Uh, you know, the low-priced hotels, the high-priced hotels. You know, are you selling a product that is essentially a commodity? Or are you now wrapping it up in an experience that is very, very different? So you think about the different things that you can sell that are actually wrapped around a product. Like, for, you know, are you selling fantasy? Maybe memories? Are you eliminating pain? Are you helping companies cut steps in their sales process or maybe in their production process? Are you uh, teaching people how to be more successful? Are you enhancing, improving, creating a new lifestyle for people? Are you giving people fame and recognition? Are you eliminating hassles in somebody's business? Uh, what if, what if, so, are you helping them to to sleep soundly at night. And I'm not talking about a, a better bed. I'm talking about that you are helping them to eliminate problems that keep them awake at night. Uh, are, you, are you helping them do that? Are you saving people time? Are you saving them money? Are you helping them create a new future for themselves? Maybe you're selling safety. How much is that worth to somebody? Maybe you're offering uh, proprietary information that they can't get anywhere else. Uh, and, and, la and lastly, which of course is what we're talking about, is maybe you're offering them a uniquely shared experience, much like the people who go to the Star Wars hotel will be getting. They will get a uniquely shared experience 
with other people a lot like them and it's going to be really really ramped up so the star wars hotel i can't wait to hear what it's all about um We'll have to wait and see whether uh, Stevie goes or not. But uh, it re I'm very excited. I can't wait. Can't wait for it to come out. This is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's dad and marketing gunslinger. Thanks for joining me again this week on Uncopyable Business. And I will be back again next week. I hope you have a great week. And in the meantime, always remember, be uncopyable.